How did West Side start hearing of your speeches? Is that while you were in Buffalo? You know what? This is another omen. This is another omen. I met Gun on a mega bus in, 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 in Athens, Georgia. And I commented, because I'm not a hater, I commented on his jacket. He had a flight jacket on that said Griselda. And I knew that to be, you know, the lady with the, yeah. with the cocaine cowboys. Then he had a Confederate flag with like real army patches, like the real ones. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I know like, exactly what Jackie shit. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The one like, he's wearing like, on like Hitler wears, I think the first one. Yeah. Yeah. That era. So yeah. I'm like, yo, bro, that jacket is crazy. Right. <laughs> so for the whole ride, that's about 50 minute ride. We talking about, not, we don't say shit about music. We're talking about clothes, processes, and the shit, how to put the shit in certain... You know, he was sharing with me nothing about no rap, bro. He was just talking about his clothing endeavor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then at the end of the ride, he says, yeah, and I do music too. And pass me the CD, so which I still have, right? Damn. And, I, and I'm looking, and I was fucking impressed. Because of the, it was Hitler too. I met him. I seen the mask, and it was a brother that I I know named Ali Elmore. He he's on the Instagram as a noble savage. He's one of my mentors as far as art and aesthetics is concerned. So I look up to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he has like these anywhere from three hundred to seven hundred to a thousand dollar hats. Hermes hats that he takes from old vintage Hermes scarves, which, you know, run up to those numbers and then created these nice hats, like with the bill on them, like panel, real nice, yeah. beautiful shit. So I was thinking of putting silk inside of a ski mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had even put it in one of my songs. I was, I was like silk in the ski mask. We need this paper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn. So then I seen gun with the ski mask and it was like more affirmative to me like this. This might be one of the things. And then I just, I just fell off of it because I realized that you're going to require sewing and all that shit. And I don't got no fucking time to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So boom. When I went and I use, I swear to God, I, I, I kind of don't like when people give me music. I would rather somebody sell me music. You know what I'm saying? So I promise you, I, I had like a little, because I'm a Scorpio. I'm like a, a fucking weirdo too in some many respects, you know? And I was like, I'm never listening to music that people just give me. Mm -hmm. But the image on the front of the disc with the Chanel, impelled yeah. me. It impelled me with the conversation I say, yo, the shit he was talking was so fucking on point. This cover is so fucking on point. Let's see if he's three for three, right? <laughs> so when and I that's got one of the hardest albums going, ever, yeah. I promise you, when I got to where I was going, I put the shit inside the computer, the disc inside, the, you know, one of the old Macs that had the drive in it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm amazed. I said, what the fuck is going on here? I said, he sound like Ghostface Killer with Big L freak the, the, just talking about dope and, and clothes. I said, this shit is amazing. Then I was like, this is because I had stopped listening to rap. I started listening to what I call classical hip hop, uh, Shabazz Palace. I was listening oh, to just so that. Good. So fucking good. Yeah. So I thought the other shit was dead. I didn't even know they existed until I got into Hitler 2. And then I heard Hall and Nash and almost broke my fucking computer. <laughs> I was like, yo, who the fuck is Conway, bro? I remember He's the first time I heard genius. Reject 2. Yeah, I heard Reject yeah. 2 when I was like driving and I was like, I got to almost pull over. This is something different. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the experience that I was having, searching and finding 
the um the music, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I had um I had listened to Hall and Nash one summer, maybe a million times. It's only like 365 fuck days in the year. You know what I'm saying? I had listened to it so much that it was like deeply ingrained in my psychology. And then one day, um, I was like, yo, gun had gun had called me because I gave him my number. Because I how long him, I said, after yo, this? Well, how long uh this had was, you met him versus him calling you? I can't even remember distinctively, but it wasn't a long period of time with us not having spoken. Yeah. Because I remember hitting him and telling him, like texting him, um, and parting, like, yo, bro, that shit is official. You heard? I um I got that shit in California with me. I'm playing this shit every day, and but everybody around me got to listen to it. That type of shit, right? Mm-hmm. So boom. Then he comes out with Hitler three. I'm like, holy shit, this shit is right. I said, yo, this shit is crazy. Then one day, gun called me after we had mad different conversations. He said, yo, um, he said, yo, I'm coming to California. I said, beautiful. I met him out here in California. He came out here with Derringer and Conway. I met all of them. Guns one, uh, um, um, with them. Boy, the shit was amazing, right? Yeah. Right. Then this is like early on, and then one time, Gun called me and said he wanted me to be on an album, and I was like, "Oh man, what kind of shit is this? This Had is he crazy." Heard your right? Speeches? Had he heard like you speaking? Yeah, before? yeah, because I told him what I do. You know what I'm saying? With the teaching, I guess he had saw it, and he said, "Man," or actually, I don't want to say it's so much the teaching. It was how we used to talk and what we talked about. He's like, I want you to talk your shit on this record. How we be talking, right? Yeah. So you hear that in Fly God. You heard? Mm-hmm. So Fly God is my, how if my brother helped me, push me over the media wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. With that, that's a with legendary, that that's a historic, that album's going to be looked back on like 36 Chambers. Like that's right. a different album. Right, right. It it really is. It's a classic. You know what I'm saying? It is. Yeah. So, so um, like you have no idea how that feel. The next day, like I I submitted my and he I think I might have been the last submission. I was bullshitting. I almost missed that fucking boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I did it all in one take in a crib on my own compressor mic and just sent it. I guess I want to say the Derringer to um for the mix. Right. And then um like a, a few months later, whatever, I wake up and people blowing my fucking phone up. And I'm seeing this red cover with gun, red cover. Everybody's blowing my shit up. This had never happened to me. Mm-hmm. Where people are sending me and sharing me, sharing to me my voice on stuff. You heard, of course, it has happened with Planet Asia, Paulo Brown and them. Right, right. But for to get a new iteration of that in a from a whole nother uh, branch of brothers was ill for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was a good look, man, and it's still a good look for me. That's my bro, for real, for real, for real, for real. Uh, uh, the brothers changed my life, man. Uh, Planet Asia, West Side Gun, is one of the most significant pillars in my uh, my development. You know what I'm saying? Dirty mm-hmm. digs and all of them. So yeah. it was a real good thing for me to incorporate the music along with the teaching because the teaching alone is nothing. People need a soundtrack to life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Has has he ever asked you to, have you ever rapped with them or is it always just like, because I mean, I work out to your, like your intros on those albums. Like when I go for a run, I put that on because it just like. It powers yeah. me. I don't need that. But you know what? A black, I, intro, a black Hitler intro on repeat yeah. like three, four times. That shit will kick me into fifth gear. Yeah. Now, this is the shit with that. I I don't know. If Gunn was to ask me to rap, I think I would decline. But on, on, on because I would try to, I would, I, I, I'm thinking that I would want to, um, to maintain the um the ambiance that we created with just me and I don't want people thinking that that was the thing that I was trying to do the whole time. Yeah. You know? So all of the guys that rap um in their circle and the affiliate 
circles and all that. Those dudes are super amazing artists. And I have, I have a great deal of respect for the vocation of hip hop. So I just seen these dudes perform. The performances is a fucking amazing. You heard? Yeah. So I've seen, I've seen um, Boldy perform. I've seen um, everybody from um, Benny performance is amazing. Flea Lord performance amazing. Conway's performance is over the top. You know Conway I mean? puts on one of the best shows I've ever seen. In yeah, my he do. Life. You get yeah. emotionally involved in that shit. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I'm so impressed by Gunn's ability to have them fucking raps all in his head. Because if you see how he rap, he rap in a form where it's stock footage. It's darts. Back to back darts. Stock, stock footage of images that postmodern art rap you got to put that shit together and when you do if you're smart you get the most illest artistic experience for hip-hop ever and it's and he changed the blueprint like my cousin red pill told me he said yo he said gun and them made it where you can't even sell Dudes, they talk about they do all this dope dealing. You can't be a dope dealer without also buying paintings and shit and knowing yeah. about fine art. You know what I'm saying? Like this, the average dope dealer shit is no good no more. It doesn't even, it doesn't translate no more. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's. I was just talking to a uh, fuck next week a couple hours ago. He says hello, and uh, he was. That's talking- my big homie. That's my <laughs> man. Yeah. Yeah, he said hi. I was just talking to him a couple hours ago. Uh, yeah. And he he said that West Side Gun is he's a curator, and I he agree. Is. It's he's a curator. That's the best way to put it. Like yes, it's like the he gallery. Know it's an art gallery. It's not a store. It is. Hell yeah, hell yeah. That's my homie Pounce. Pounce is correct with that. Gun know where right where to put you, according to your vocation. You heard, like this, and if you if you like this with this hip-hop shit they made it easier to to for real people who can maintain consistency and maintain long-standing relationships to get the most you can out of this because back in the day and the way the art form was and especially in new york city not new york state new york city it's a goddamn rat race of a dominance hierarchy where everybody thinks they tough you heard Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm so glad Griselda came out to show that it's not about New York City because they're not doing New York City music in New York City. You know? Everybody sound like a little boy from out of town. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of, even the producers, they all sound like they can't make, they don't know how to sample. So they go, boop, 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 boop. And then I, all of the kids doing that stuff. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.